Good morning. Not too long ago, I made a video about my daily Fujifilm photography kit. That video went down with you very well, and in this video, I'll be expanding on that by showing you what I bring with me on my bigger trips. Also, I'm running on about three hours sleep, so if I stutter or I don't make any sense, I do apologize. One more very important point that I say at the start of every gear-related video, I do this for a living. This is my bread and butter. This is how I pay my bills. Therefore, I can justify having more premium equipment and having certain equipment that most people who do this as a hobby would never ever need. Please don't think that just because I use this is what you need to get good photos or to do what I do is definitely not the case. So let's start with bags and the current state that the bags are in are fully packed for travel days. I literally just walked into this hotel room and I figured this is the best time to do it. So first up, we have a small sling. This is what I keep on me all the time. It has passports and other bits, but I'll show you in a minute. Then there is a Bellroy 26 litre backpack. This has all of my camera gear, laptops and tech. And finally is a small Bellroy duffel, which has all my clothes and toiletries and that kind of stuff in it. So in a small 2.5 litre Bellroy pouch is where I keep things that I would typically keep in my pockets and it's a lot more secure. So generally speaking, I'll have things like headphones in there, a battery pack, sunglasses, my phone, um, basically the basics that you would need. And in the back here, open up I'll keep let's say passport a bit of money my travel card just the basics that you would possibly need when you're out and about wallet keys this is probably my favorite accessory in this little pouch and that is the Joby folding phone tripod you can use it to prop your phone up and watch movies on the plane or use it for time lapse to take pictures of yourself to film whatever you want really it's so good the power bank I use is this little anchor, has a built-in USB-C cable, but you can also plug stuff into it. It's so small and it can easily keep my phone running pretty much all day. And the last thing that's in the little bag is this little camera, which is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Obviously I can't show it to you because I'm filming on it. And this camera is incredible. I use it for almost all my video when I'm out and about now and it just makes making videos so much easier and the quality is insane considering how small it is. I keep in a little pouch, oops, I've knocked it. I keep in the little pouch all the time because just in case. Now this is what I meant with this pouch. You can literally just keep it here and all your valuables, everything is in one place and not in your pockets. It'll help for, with pickpocketing in busy places, but also when you're like on a plane or train, you don't risk losing anything. And finally, when you go out just for a walk, you can easily put one lens in there. You can put your phone, all the bits and bobs. And if you have like a small camera, like a X100V or Ricoh, that will easily fit in there as well, along with this little video camera. So really, really love this setup. Moving on is my backpack of choice, which is the Bellroy 26 liter backpack. I've actually just published blogs on all my bags, so do check them out. I love this bag, it's so versatile, it's light, and it can be used for so many things. This thing is incredible, it's a hero clip, and what it allows you to do is it allows you to hang your bag off a table, chair, hook, so if you need to not have your bag lying on the floor, this thing is really, really useful. Starting in the top pocket, I just have a little first aid kit and something to clean my hands. Here I have a neck buff, which doubles up as a sleeping mask for the flight. I have one USB-C cable, uh, uh, one Minix charger, these are great actually, and a, an SD card to iPhone dongle just in case I need to send stuff to my laptop or my phone. One other good thing about this bag is it can open pretty much all the way around. This is definitely difficult one-handed, I must admit, but we'll get there. So if I, come on, come on. Oh, this is a hassle, isn't it? There we go. So a whole bag can open up like this. And this is basically what's inside. So in here is all my tech. So this is basically my tech pouch, but I'll go through that in more detail in a minute. I keep one of my cameras kind of on standby with the uh, 50 mil lens, just in case I need to take a photo of something interesting, but I'll talk about camera gear in a minute. And in here 
oh sorry this is a little peak design folding tote great shopping bag beach bag or any time i don't want to bring a bigger bag with me so also very useful and in here is a bellroy 10 liter sling so this is a camera sling but it also doubles up as you can see as a camera cube for travel days and it fits this bag like a glove so if i pull that out and put that there and that's pretty much everything apart from laptop in there which is a 14 inch macbook pro there's no point going into the details because it's just a laptop but this thing does everything in the top pocket here all i have is a pair of wired headphones as a backup for the wireless ones and for video editing an apple air tag sits in there and that is about it oh no it's not there's one more pocket right here and inside is just a folding water bottle just in case you need water whilst out and about. Now let me show you the camera setup. So first of all, we have the Fuji X-H2. There's the one camera and a Fuji X-H2S as the second camera. The X-H2S is a video first camera while the X-H2 is a photo first camera because it's a higher resolution sensor while this is a quicker camera, so to speak. The reason I have two X-H2s uh, is because for backup, if one goes down, if one breaks, if I drop, if it gets stolen, I still need to be able to make things. Therefore, the second one is a good backup. As for lenses, in total, we have four. First of all, we have the Fujifilm 18mm f1.4. So full frame terms, this is a around about 27, 28 mil, so a wide angle prime. We have the Fuji 33 f1.4. So full frame, you're looking at about a 50 mil. And we have the Fuji 90 mil f2 which is about 135 mil on a full frame and finally we have the fuji 16 to 55 f28 which is my 24 to 70 general purpose zoom now i can tell you that this zoom will not be used as much as the primes because it's a bit big it's a bit bulky and honestly i was really close to leaving it at home however traveling without a zoom a general zoom like this I don't know. I think you always need a general zoom and it's also a great backup for the primes just in case they drop one. This lens is very old. It's starting to fall apart, but it still works really, really well. The wide angle, so the 18 mil is going to be my establishing lens for setting the scene. The 33 mil is going to be kind of my main photography lens for subjects and the 90 is going to be my telephoto lens for things which are further away. Now, when you couple these lenses with the 40 megapixel sensor of the X-H2, you can crop in quite a bit more, therefore extending your range. And finally is the tripod. It's a little, what is it, Coleman, tiny little desk tripod. I mean, to be fair, it still goes up quite high. This is just an extension for it. And this is what I would use if I need to film any talking heads whilst I'm in the Airbnb or in a hotel. I generally don't use tripods for photography. It'll be pretty much for video and for filming myself. But it's small, it's light, it's compact. So it's definitely worthwhile bringing. And last but not least, I have these earth magnetic filters and a magnetic lens cap for each lens. Specifically, each lens will have a CPL and an ND8. So the ND is good for cutting sunlight out, especially if I'm somewhere bright, whilst the CPL is good for cutting reflections and making the sky a little bit more blue. I generally don't shoot with filters that much. However, I am starting to use filters a little bit more, especially for more travel photography type stuff. So yeah, these are very useful. Now let me show you what's inside the accessory pouch. So the actual accessory pouch is just a Bellroy pouch. And these are the noteworthy items. So we have a Fuji charger with two batteries, spare SD cards, another Minix wall charger, SanDisk SSD, the one that doesn't crash, um, a neck strap, some audio cables, a bunch of USB-C Thunderbolt charger cables, a bunch of adapters to convert USB-C to anything else. This is my main microphone setup, with, which is the DJI mic. I love this thing, so, so good. Then we have some ND filters for the Osmo. We have a CF Express and SD card reader for the iPhone and laptop. We have a, I can't remember the brand, but a small rig multi-tool, also useful. Now I have this little flash. I've had this since the X-T3 because it came with the X-T3. I don't really use it, but I bring it with me just in case. 
And last but not least is this thing. This is kind of the latest addition and it's a multi charger for my phone, watch, headphones. So it kind of all just sits in one place, which means I only need one cable to charge all my stuff. And now let me show you what's inside the duffel, which has clothes and all that stuff. But for this, I'll keep it brief. You don't need to see all my pants. So first up is a little unique low ultra light down packable down jacket. Great, great for cold environments. Can use it as a pillow. It's one of the best purchases I've made and it's really cheap as well. In here is another bell rope pouch. And this is all toiletries, shaver, toothpaste, you know, the usual stuff. Don't need to go into the details. This is a Rab uh, waterproof jacket. Had these, had this for a couple of years now, and I love it. It works so, so well. Comes with me everywhere I go. Then there is this packing cube, which will have another pair of trainers and a pair of flip flops. And what's left are two large packing cubes for clothes. This has t-shirts, socks, pants, and this has everything else. As for the packing cubes, I use these Peak Design Compression Packing Cubes. Basically, there's two zips, one zip to close it, and the other zip to compress, if you can see, to compress the packing cube down. Therefore, it takes up a lot less room. So large one, small one, both Peak Design, and they fit into this Bellroy 40 liter uh, bag like a glove. So generally that's it. As you can see, my room is an absolute mess now, but clothes, laptop, duffel bag, my backpack, which I love, obviously my main camera bag, which is the 10 liter sling. Once I attach the uh, actual sling bit to it, obviously my little sling, uh, tech pouch, stay, and all my camera gear. All right, well, I hope you found this video somewhat useful. I know I get many questions about what do I bring with me for these longer term trips and hopefully this answers it. Again, sorry, I'm really slow today uh, because I'm running on like almost no sleep from the overnight flight. However, this was a good time to make this video. Yes, it's not very polished, but it gets the point across and that's the main point of that. Anyway, tomorrow I am actually going to be going into town and filming an interview with a really, really cool photographer that I've spoken to a little bit and I've been following his work for years. It's very different to anything that I've had on the channel before and I think you will love that interview, but more on that later on. For now, I'm going to wish you a good day. I need to go have a shower, get some breakfast and probably go for a nap after as well. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. If you're finding this video useful and wish to support the channel, then one of the best ways to do so is to check out my Fujifilm camera guides. I only make guides for cameras I've personally purchased and owned for at least six months. This ensures that any advice I give is based on the real world experience. These guides are designed to save you time and remove a lot of the trial and error that comes with setting up new cameras. They cover the main features that most people will use and will show you how to set up your camera for efficiency, ease of use, and to get the best results. If you've just purchased a Fuji or want to learn more about your current camera, these guides will definitely help. For more information, see the links in the description and thank you for your support.